the type of refractive error and how common they are vary enormously from region to region. The region with the lowest um, proportion of children at school with uncorrected refractive error is in Africa, where it's probably less than 2% of children have um, a refractive error. This is very different to Asia, countries such as um, China and Singapore up to 80% of children now have been shown to have myopia. So there's a big variation in the proportion of children who have uncorrected refractive error and have therefore need services. The age at which refractive errors develop also varies. So children who are long-sighted tend to be younger and they grow out of it as they grow up. So primary school children may have um, hypermetropia, but by the time they're nine or ten, that's all got better on its own and they no longer lead spectacles. On the other hand, uh, short-sightedness myopia is very uncommon, except in China, and it tends to develop around the age of nine or ten. So most programs for the detection and treatment of refractive error outside China focus on children aged ten years and above. Um, having said that, there is a great um, need for services for refractive error to be integrated into Ministry of Education and Ministry of Health's school programs. These are now expanding considerably and are res receiving much more support because it's been realised that children who are not healthy or who are hungry or who are deficient in, in vitamins or who've got worms don't learn well. So there's a big initiative to try and cover many different conditions in school aged children and refractive errors can be seen as being part of that service. And this means working with ministries of education as well as ministries of health. Again, if a, um, a team is going into a school to deal with refractive errors, then there are all sorts of other things they can and probably should be doing. The teachers are likely to have um, presbyopia, which will make their job difficult in marking homework in a, in a poorly lit home environment is going to make that task very difficult. They may have glaucoma, they may be diabetic and have diabetic retinopathy. So addressing the health needs of teachers is not only good to improve their ability to be able to do their job, but it will also raise their awareness of eye health needs generally. Um, children also have other eye conditions like styes and conjunctivitis, which needs to be detected and treatment treated. And they may have younger siblings at home who have locally endemic diseases such as trachoma and vitamin A deficiency. And children can be used as agents of change to take health messages home so that their younger siblings can also receive some benefit from the, the program. So I think it's important to think more broadly um, than just narrowly focusing on refractive errors. And this can be an, an entry point into schools and into ministries of education to highlight the needs for the eye health needs of children generally.